One of the aspects I want to show real quickly that's very important um, is the scale of the drawings you're working at. In some of the previous videos where we introduced the importance of structural engineering and sketching, we were using graph paper. On that one, each square was a quarter inch. Um, many times when you'll go to get graph paper, you will seldom find scales that are exactly like you like. What I want to show here quickly, this is not a video to show how to use Revit. I'm assuming you know how to work with detail lines, drafting views, and title blocks. If you don't know how to do those, there is notable amount of help and tutorials. If you go up to the, the question mark icon, there is the help section, essential videos. Most everything I'm about to show you would be very basic for someone who knows Revit. Let me just open up a new template. I'm going to start in the structural template. And as it opens, I'm going to talk about a couple things. There are line weights. I'm going to quickly go in here and make a view, a drafting view. And I'm going to do a custom scale. Notice it's asking for scale value. This is the same scale factor we worked with when we were calculating that in the hand sketches. I'm going to make a drafting view that's one to one. And this is a blank drawing area. First thing I'm going to do now that I'm in this drafting view is draw a line. And I'm going to go to detail line. I'm going to draw the line in. And then I'm going to grab it and make it one inch. And then I'm going to draw a line in the other direction and make it one inch. Okay, next I'm going to go under Manage, Additional Settings, Line Styles, and I want to make two line styles. I'm going to make a new one called Underscore Grid Line Major, and another one Grid Line Minor. I'm noticing both of these are black. I'm going to switch them. I have found that this color works well. What we're doing here is we're building our own graph paper. And we'll show why this why we'd want to do this. The major one, I'm going to show the example I'm doing, and I'm going to make it a pen weight of two and the minor one. These are the two major lines. I'm going to come up here, select major. I'm then going to copy these over 0.125 inches which is an eighth inch and I want seven of those I'm sorry eight of those okay I'm gonna select all of those and I'm gonna ungroup them have them selected and I'm gonna make those the minor lines so we zoom in here we can start to see there's a line weight differentiation then I'm going to let me ungroup this last one. So now I have those lines. I'm going to take these, copy them to the right, rotate them 90 degrees, and then I'm going to move them back into place. Once that's done, I'm going to group it. Don't really care what the name is at this point. I'm going to array it and I'm going to go seven across and as I come out of that I'm going to take that group and array it and then for those I want to go eight up it's calculating it what it's doing is it's blowing out the graph paper it looks like it is all the same thickness but it's really not there is a line weight differentiation and what I'll do then for this last piece is go in and I would draw annotation line closing off the box. That's my drafting view. I would then go into the sheets, make a new sheet. I'm going to load a standard title block. All of this would be covered in a introductory tutorial to Revit. I'm going to open that up. This is the standard title block. What I can do is edit that 
and just for this exercise go in and delete it all out the title block information all I'm wanting to do is have an eight and a half by eleven standard sheet I could save this as a new name load it into the project it'll overwrite and then I can simply start to drag my graph paper onto the sheet now when I do that I want to take that and I want to turn it off where there's no line weight so what I've just shown here I'm going to open up a different Revit model and kind of show the final product I could add my own logos whatever I wanted to it what's important to this is that this is eighth inch scale and I'll show why that's important if I am drawing at inch and a half scale for my sketch then each one of these blocks equals one inch if I'm drawing at three-quarter inch scale then each one of these blocks is two inches and this is a very com those are two very common scales you'll find for imperial type work like architectural details may be at three inch scale in which case each square is a half inch but this makes it a very handy way to sketch your details uh, very rapidly the the benefits of inch and a half scale with each of these being an inch is you can quickly work on concrete and steel details and sketch to scale without creating a lot of extra rework additionally um, you can make this graph paper however you need for whatever your purpose is leave room for hole punches etc next I'll show how what the final product looks like what we're going to do next is just take some plain paper and we're going to go and start printing the graph paper that we had put together and what I'm going to do is take that off the printer and what we end up with is essentially the paper you've got where your major lines are slightly thicker it's it's using a light gray and then the minor lines are using one you can see from scaling it b square is exactly an inch and then you have eighth inch increments across this works great if you're sketching for example if I needed to quickly put in an 18 inch wide grade beam I know that's 16 I come two squares over past the second major and that's 18 inches and I know my clear cover on the bottom I want two room for a stirrup my clear on the side there would come across and I'm just sketching the bottom of the grade beam as it goes up and if this is at uh, what I'm showing here in this example is inch and a half of scale equals one foot. By knowing that, I then can simply come in and a number eight rebar is exactly one inch. So just be an eighth inch per square. This is showing me proportionally. It looks like the rebar would easily fit in an 18 inch wide beam. If I need to call it out again, I could draw a line and come over the side. So again, the point of this is not to belabor making graph paper, but it's, it's very handy if you can. It's an easy trick to do. Um, and this literally takes less than 10 minutes. Um, the power of having it set up where you can control it is if you are drawing to scale and you have good graph paper, it makes it very quick and easy to draw your details to scale and you can start to spot congestion, construction, constructability issues. And then when you hand this to a technician or a modeler, they already have a very good idea of what they're working with. That concludes this video.